The sun rises, dim, distant, and colder than we're used to. Just a pale disk cutting through the thin Martian air. Earth, just a tiny blue dot lost in the void. A massive swirling dust cloud envelops everything, shredding camera lenses, silencing microphones, and seeping into our lungs, our pores, every crevice of our bodies. The bandanas that we wore over our faces, they worked in El Paso. They even worked pretty well in Iran, but here on Mars, these dust storms are relentless. They always are. Sure, this is just a cool scenario I made up, but it's also a likely future memoir. Mars can have dust clouds that last for months. The sweeping winds of the American Midwest or Eastern Europe, just a breeze compared to the chaotic gales of Mars. Welcome back, beautiful minds. You're tuned into Maddie Adams. Let's learn together. So there are no trees on Mars to slow the wind. The atmosphere is too thin to buffer heat or blunt the storms. This is the wild, wild west, only colder and redder and everywhere. You think solar panels will save us? Well, I've got bad news for you. They'd be covered in dust so fast, and the microscopic particles here, they'd scratch and pit the surface of the photovoltaic cells far faster than on Earth. And sure, the Ingenuity Copter taught us that Mars can blow some dust off with the wind, if you're lucky, but it takes skill, timing, or movement to get that kind of self-cleaning magic. The Ingenuity Copter was able to teach us another amazing fact, though. When it was close enough to the Perseverance rover, the rotor downwash, or the air that's displaced downward by its spinning blades, was observed to lift and transport Martian dust. High-speed imaging from the Perseverance rover captured this phenomenon, showing that the rotor wash could disturb surface dust and potentially clean nearby equipment. This observation suggests that rotorcraft could play a role in maintaining solar panel efficiency on Mars by mitigating dust accumulation. Wind turbines? Forget it. Dust and lubricants don't mix, and the gears inside these turbines would need maintenance constantly. I mean, we're talking about unmanageable levels of upkeep, in a place where spare parts aren't really just down the road. And dust isn't the only danger here. In the swirling chaos, static electric storms light up the sky. Lightning with no rain. Plasma arcs dancing between the clouds of charged particles. Each dust grain brushing past another, it builds up static. And with such a thin atmosphere, that charge doesn't dissipate, it strikes. It's basically, just like I said, really hardcore static electricity. If you've ever walked around your house in socks on a dry day on a wood floor, and then you zap the soul out of yourself when you touch a doorknob, well, that's tripoelectric charging in action. Now, let's imagine that, but the entire planet is your living room, and the air is so thin and dry, it can't bleed off that charge. On Mars, dust storms hurl microscopic particles against each other, building up static electricity like crazy. The friction transfers electrons between grains, charging them up until they start snapping with discharges. With so little atmospheric moisture, there's just nothing to stop it. So those epic planet-wide dust storms, they're not just dirty, they're electric. Boogie oogie oogie. One misplaced step, one unshielded wire, and zap, your comms go silent, your drones fall out of the sky, or your suit glitches just long enough to make your heart skip. The roar of the wind never stops, but now it crackles with blue arcs and sudden flashes, like ghost fire on the plains. These aren't Earth's thunderstorms. There's no distant rumble, no downpour to cleanse the air, just dust and charge, millions of volts building in silence, until they're not silence anymore. On Earth, we ground equipment to the soil. On Mars, what do you ground to when the ground itself is the storm? Every rover, every base module, everything has to be shielded, hardened, like it's under siege. Because it is. And let's not forget, there are no roots here to hold the soil together. No grasses, no shrubs, not even desperate cactus trying to cling to life. Nothing. No oasis, maybe water deep underground and in the ice caps, sure, but nothing like the oases and deserts that we know. Just one huge desert. But maybe that's what makes it beautiful. But Mars doesn't want us here. It doesn't roll out a welcome mat, it doesn't compromise. But in that resistance, in that chaos, there's clarity. If we survive here, it won't be because we conquered the planet. 
It'll be because we made some serious adaptations. Dust, static, storms. This is the price of building a future beyond Earth. So we shield our circuits, we learn to predict the winds, we build, we fail, and we rebuild again, and there will probably be a lot of failing. But one day, someone will walk out of a Martian shelter, look up at a storm, darkened sky, and whisper that we made it. Hopefully. What do you guys think? I hope you enjoyed today's story. I wanted to talk a little bit more about some of the immense challenges of Mars. I know sometimes I talk in a bit of an optimistic tone when it comes to colonizing things, um, you know, in our solar system. But the truth of the matter is we are talking about some immense tasks. And humans have never let those types of problems stop us before. I sure as heck don't think we're going to now. We'll see once those first colonies get down there and how, how catastrophic things are. Come on, let's be honest. We know there's going to be some bad stuff on those first couple of trips. As always, this has been Maddie Adams. Thanks for watching with me, and I hope you learn something new each and every day. Bye.